Good morning and welcome to Thursday, August 10th. And, uh, you know, beginning of my nice little bit of time off. And what better way to celebrate than to start by coming out to Forest Park. Um, that's one of the most amazing things here uh, about living in St. Louis is we have Forest Park, which has so many free, you know, opportunities, entertainments. Um, of course, I have the Muni, which I've been to a couple times since I've started the vlog, and of course also have, uh, I'm, I'll be going there again tomorrow, uh, weather permitting. In addition to that, we have the Art Museum, which I'm actually walking by, it's uh, just on the other side of some trees here. Um, we have History Museum, we have Science Center, all things I'll do at some point and share with you because they all have at least parts of them that are free and they're amazing benefits to living in the city. Uh, well, near the city. I don't live in the city. I wouldn't want to. I don't like, that's the one negative part. I have to drive through the city and I don't like city driving. But still, living nearby, great benefit. For today, I am here to go to the zoo. And uh, one of the things I like about the zoo, and I'm going through the north entrance here, which is really kind of the back entrance. I mean, it's just been one of the things I've loved as a kid. Yeah, you know, since I was a kid. One of the things I've liked is, it's not just a free zoo. It's an amazing zoo. Like, look up online, St. Louis Zoo. It's like up on this of some of the great zoos in the country. So, definitely appreciate that. And I, I mean, I've been to zoos that I've had to pay to enter that are not as nice. Let's grab a map here so we can keep track of where we're at and where we're going. So we're entering, uh, we just entered right here, the north entrance, and there's like a whole little building here, the Living World, which used to be completely different when I was a kid. They've, they've changed all sorts of stuff, but that building, more than any, changed since I was a kid. Anyway, so that's sort of the the back entrance with the southern entrance being like the main one. Um, so that's why I call it the back entrance. And uh, we're gonna probably go south from here, past Discovery Center, because that is the children's zoo, which the children's zoo costs money. There's a few things here that do cost money. That, I mean, that's how they support themselves, but the bulk of the thing is free, and I'm just gonna stick with, uh, other than food, uh, which I usually don't buy, but uh, I decided I would today, so I'll, I'll get some of that. But otherwise, I'm gonna just do the free stuff today, so you'll kind of get the idea from there. We're gonna head south, and we're going to do River's Edge. Um, and River's Edge is one of the things that was added, like, you know, to memory of me. Like, I remember before that existed. I remember back when they were doing construction to build that. Um, and the reason I'm starting there it's because the last time I came here last summer, that was the thing I didn't get to do. So I'm gonna make sure I get to do that today. So, heading to River's Edge now. It is only fair to point out that the insectarium is also one of the free things you can do, but I don't like looking at bugs, because bugs are icky. So, I have no desire to do that today. And River's Edge enters here with a set point. Uh, and a waterfall. But of course, uh, with it being River's Edge, there is water like that throughout pretty much most of it moving through, which is part of what makes it cool. Uh, but it is, yeah, it's a set path that goes through this section of the zoo, whereas most of the zoo is just sort of a, a pattern and you can kind of choose your own path. River's Edge, you literally, want, the other end says exit only, you start this way, you go through. It works pretty well. Mm -hmm. You might be nocturnal. Or we might just be sick and tired of this heat. Baby Moyo. New baby rhino. Very large baby. I mean, it's a rhino. We got uh, painted dogs hanging out in the shade. Can you see them? Oh. On the ground. Look at that. Cute doggies. Oh. 
Oh, they're, they're in the shade. The habit I notice is all the animals are trying to stay out of the heat. Look at me walking around here, deliberately coming outside. What kind of fool am I? Hippo horror. Whole giant aquarium area, and they all stuff themselves over in the corner away from the uh, viewing area. Oi. Oh well. Oh no. We have to stop for a train. They are sleeping. We're coming up on the elephants. I think I think they're Asian elephants. Not 100 percent but I think so. He's drinking again. They got a lot of elephants. Tons of them. Oh, we got some little elephants. Poor oh, little family. Gotta love a whole little family of elephants. Big old fish. And there we go. That is uh, the end of River's Edge, exiting through that cave. Uh, and like I said, sign says exit only over here. So now I'm gonna figure out where to go to next. So I've gone around River's Edge and I'm back out here at the exit. I'm gonna go in front of uh, basically what is the main entrance. I'll walk around there and uh yeah, i'm getting hungry so i'm gonna head up to the lakeside cafe there's all sorts of spots to eat but that one's indoors and i want a little indoor time because it's hot out so while i was going past the main entrance i decided hey I'll, i'm gonna step right outside and get a picture of the uh the big concrete zoo work because i remember that from my kid i was like that'd be a great uh to use for the cover image like of the video um, and it's right outside the front door but it's not anymore it's like all the way across the parking lot at the front at the south side of the front parking lot um, like close to the highway now there's a path going there but it's not just that there's a path to that sign it's now more kind of like right at the highway so I guess it works but there's also a path between the parking lot and the uh, zoo that no longer has you crossing traffic that was not the case when I was a kid. I mean, it, it wasn't like high, which I mean, it was uh, just the like one of the roads through the zoo. There were always just crossing guards that helped you get across. Now, there's the some statues and a bridge. There's actually like a really cool looking bridge and path that leads you over top of the road here. Um, which first off is much safer. And so that's cool. But also it just looks cool. I mean, you got the statues, yeah, south arrival experience. If you got big, I mean, just the, the, the look of it, almost a uh, little Jurassic Park. Yeah, you got a road, what a bridge over here. The road down below. Keep you safe. That's a good thing, right? Keep you safe. 
keeping people safe. So, I thought that was kind of cool. But yeah, just wanted to get that cover image and I found out, because I mean, that's one of the paid parking lots. So I haven't been there since I was a kid and someone else was paying to park. I don't, I don't much care to, uh, to pay to park. I'd rather park for free and walk more. I'm at the zoo. I'm gonna be walking around the whole time anyways. The zoo is free. And if you're wanting to know any of the stuff that I don't do, and the prices, uh, non-members is just normal people and then you can do stuff. Train blocking my way again. And I see a tortoise, and what I think of is the uh, Alice, I don't know if it's Adventures in Wonderland or through the, I think Adventures in Wonderland, you know, uh, the school of fish, and their teacher was a turtle. Like, they call them tortoise. Well, if he's a turtle, why would you call him tortoise? But well, we call them tortoise because he tortoise. Pass him by that and some Chinese alligators on the way over to the cafe. Close up your map and actually Hanging out at the water's edge. Just the Chinese alligator hanging out by the water. You know? Or yeah. in the water. I mean, hmm. Gonna see what they have to eat here at the Lakeside Cafe. A carnivore and more. That's good. And the AC is nice too. Um, I love that. Yeah, here's where the crowd is in the air conditioning. So I got the, uh, and I'll probably eat at least a dessert or something later, snack. But for right now, I spent $10.50 and I got a bonus buffalo wing meal, which is buffalo wings, and they smell buffalo meat very much like that vinegar kind of smell. So that should be good. And then, with a thing of fries and a regular size drink, 22 ounces soda, and which they throw up behind there so that's no refill. It is quite expensive, but I mean, again, this is one of the ways they make their money, so you gotta understand. And I got a seat in the air conditioning, so worth it. It actually wouldn't have bad uh, spicy buffalo, which is nice, uh, but I did find they had ranch, which made it easier to take. <laughs> but uh, heading out of there. And uh, I'll show you where I ended up. Yeah, here at the underwater cove. So you from the Lakeside Cafe. I just went right across here to the sea lions. So we'll see if we can see some sea lions. Seals and sea lions. But honestly, I just love this little tunnel underneath the water. I love the lighting and all that that it produces. Very pretty little area. Even if it weren't for the seals and sea lions, I love it. <laughs> all right, where to now? I think from the sea lions, I'm actually going to go back up the path a bit and cut into the uh, herpetarium see myself some reptiles. And outside of that they got the uh, American alligator which uh, is actually kind of a common sight for me. Not this big. Uh, I never, I mean, outside of a zoo or attraction I've not seen one this big. You know, praise God. Uh, but I mean, I actually, you know, when I, w I went to school out in Florida and I'd end up with some babies that would crawl around outside the, you know, the door of my uh, apartment when I was out there. And you just sort of told someone and they'd chase them away. <laughs> yeah, I'll agree, common. Yeah. <laughs> Which always made me thought, I mean, if there's babies, there's got to be an adult somewhere. And welcome to the Charles H. Hustle Herpetarium. 
I'm not going to show everything in here because, well, a lot of the places, a lot of these are just smaller aquariums, tanks, and I'm like, where is there even something in there? Um, so not only is there a huge number of them, but I can't always find them. But they got a lot of stuff here. Like the Pit Viper. This is the Vietnamese long nosed snake. Poor guy. They made fun of him, gave him a funny name, told him he had a long nose. I mean, he does, but I mean, it's not nice to name him that. The quartz box turtle. So, turtle. And we have, of course, uh, uh, there's a bottle and there's Blick Studio Coat paints. I have those paints. Oh, wait. Unoccupied. Okay, this unoccupied uh, exhibit is being painted, like the walls, which is cool in itself, but I love that they have that, they have a little blurb about <laughs> subspecies of homo sapien. But yeah, I mean, nice painting, but that is kind of cool. That yeah, is really cool, actually. Got the uh, ground boa. He's uh, on the ground. <laughs> and uh, these sort of decent sized tank, whatever things, enclosures, always make me think of uh, Harry Potter. You know, don't lean against the grass. So from the herpetarium, we're going to go make our way to the primate house. This is a short walk. Down the path to see some primates. And I have made it to the primate house with all the monkeys and such. Oh look, cleaning out the, uh, well, you know what the monkeys leave behind. Again. Black-handed spider monkeys. In silhouette. Lemur and ring tailed lemurs up there. Way up there. Lemurs can be cute. And heading out to the outside ocean. Black and white ruffled lemurs. I like to move and move. They're just relaxing up there where this guy's hanging out playing. And now from the uh, primate house and just outside of it, I'm heading to the Red Rocks. And much like the other side at the river's edge, I can't, well this one is not like a single path through, it has all sorts of options. It just, 
it always feels like one area to me. Uh, well, or maybe two. First is right there is uh, big cat country. And so hopefully we'll see some big cats. Love cats. Uh, and then it's also things like antelope and zebras and giraffes and other stuff. Um, but it just sort of has like a, a feel to it where the whole area feels like it's, you know, one area. There is a lion sleeping atop the rock there. What a precious little lion. Ah, so sweet. Big cat country from 1975. Wow. But it is one of the areas I remember from when I was a kid. And it's certainly changed over the years. But it's always lovely because I like the kitty. Oh, look at that. It's a tiger. Tiger walking around. And it is most certainly raining at this point. Hopefully the animals get interesting because of it. And hopefully my camera is okay. An amour leopard. It's focusing on the fence. I do not know if this will let me focus past the fence this time. There is a snow leopard. Come on, don't look at the fence. No, focus the other way. A lot of the uh, big cats are behind like fence kind of things that my camera, ref this camera at least, refuses to focus beyond. So I try and get a look at it and it just uh, looks at the fence. But, we do have some zebras right next door. Just standing around, being all stripy. And laying down, being lazy. And we have camels. Hanging out by the wall, sitting down. Addicts. We got some tacking. We got giraffes and ostriches and other things. But those are the ones I know. We get uh, kangaroo and there's little joeys hanging out outside. But I was seeing them bounce earlier. <laughs> <laughs> Adorable kangaroos and some joeys. It didn't really rain much at all. It drizzled for five minutes. At this point, it's completely dried up again. But it did slightly bring the temperature down with just that little bit. So, you know what? Good for that, right? Got some of whatever these things are. Yeah, them. So I'm finishing up the Red Rocks right around here, and I'm going to go through this uh, 1904 World's Fair 
flight cage and Cypress Swamp, which is like built in this giant bird cage from the 1904 World's Fair, which was in St. Louis. Um, which is a few things in Forest Park, like in general, that are from that 1904 World's Fair. So it's pretty cool, and we'll check out the flight cage. Welcome to the 1904 World's Fair flight cage in the Cypress Swamp. First there is double doors, keep things in. And this is one of the ones where you're just kind of in here with the animals, but they're birds, so it's fine. You got your pass. And it's all swampy, there's some birds over there. And there's the cage roof above. Definitely s smells a bit swampy. Lovely. It kind of makes me think of uh, Jurassic Park 3. I think that's the one that had the big flight cage, right? Huh. Look at them. And there's ducks. They're like right there. Like I could, I could step out there, you know. Well, I mean, I'd get wet. I don't want to do that. I could. There's nothing between us. Me and my duck buddies. Oh, and I'll definitely show this off on the exit or the other entrance. I guess you can go either way through it. In fact, I think this is the first way I've gone this way through. Over on this side, as you exit. There's this cool little tile mural. I always like that. Really, is just hanging out in the corner. There we go. He's moving. Another corner. You see paparazzi. <laughs> Definitely a silver bag. So I went through the gorilla portion of the jungle of the apes and I'll head back through the orangutans a bit later. But before I go too much further, I want to stop by the birdhouse and bird garden because that way I'll have cleared off this side of the zoo. So, make my stop by, see some more birds. And going inside to see some more birds. And air conditioning? Air conditioning. Yes. Oh good. I'm gonna stop by for some birds. Birds, are nice. birds live in the air conditioning. Hello. The Congo peafowl. Just hanging out here by his by the edge of his cage. Tony Frogmouth. Hey. Oh. What's going on? Just hanging out, moving around. I don't even know what you want. Oh, but you figured out you can you can put your beak through the wires. <laughs> it's the cape thick knee. We have the rhinoceros hornbill. Some pretty big birds. Crestwood Park. Got a cool little hairdo. I'm sure it's a tree feathers, but I'm gonna call it a hairdo. It's more of the frog mouth. These are the, the, the tawny frog mouths. 
looking all sleepy eyed. And actually, it looked kind of cute. Just hanging out. <laughs> Ooh, this one's active. The red legged Serima. Ooh, just running around, having fun. Jolly old time. <laughs> the high class macaw. They called them macaws because of their claws? No, because they're macaws. King Vulture. Yeah, and back outside. Okay. And we do have a uh, lovely bald eagle here. Oh, that's wonderful. Here we are, a very pretty bird. Ooh. Take this nest building. Vultures. And the bird garden is another another little pathway area. I bet it has birds in it. Ah, oh, I was wondering where the toucan was. I didn't see it inside. Jumping around. That's cool. That's the little toucan. Well, usually that, that, that's been on the inside of the birdhouse. But apparently it's outside today. Or maybe this season, or who knows. We got uh, Edward's pheasant. Ch chilling out here in his cage. He's got a much bluer friend in the back, but this doll cord one is right up front. There's so much nature right around here, in the middle of the park kind of thing. But you know, in addition to the zoo animals, you get real life animals. The zoo animals are real life animals. That's not the best way to put it. You know what I mean. So there were a few smaller birds in the, uh, in the bird path, whatever. Anyways, heading out from there, I'm actually going to make my way around, back almost to the cafe, um, which will let me pretty much get back on track for the last little loop within the zoo. Uh, as, again, other than River's Edge, the whole place is multiple connecting loops. Um, so I'm gonna head back there, but it'll also give me somewhere if I wanna do dessert. I think I might. I think I've walked my, my fair share today. I might do myself a dessert. Seeing some little what, prairie dogs or whatever. <laughs> On the way to get something to eat. And in front of the Lakeside Cafe, I'm taking a detour over to get a snack. So yeah, I got a dessert. Got a nice funnel cake a la mode. Funnel cake with ice cream. It was, uh, it was eight dollars, and it's certainly more than I need to eat for, for dessert, but it uh, looks tasty. That's good. Fried dough, powdered sugar, and ice cream? Where could I go wrong? Where I went wrong was thinking I didn't need a drink. I did. I was really thirsty after that. That fried dough made me very thirsty. Uh, I mean, it was delicious. Well, funnel okay. cake. But I, I, I tried to say, like, oh, I don't need to get that. I'll keep my whole day under $20. I'm now over $20. Which was basically $3.50 to get a drink. 
but I needed it and it's good. And I decided to have this in the Lakeside Cafes so I'd have air conditioning. So after uh, heading back to the cafe for something to drink, I'm gonna make my way around to more Jungle of the Apes, Fragile Forest for the chimpanzees and orangutans. Uh, the other side of that, so finally after some birds and uh, dessert break, back to more apes. They're all active today. A lot of days they're just hanging out by the glass. Monkeying around. Chimpanzee. Oh, chimpanzees just hanging out in the chimpanzee enclosure, like they do. I feel like there's one near the glass over here. Yep, a couple. No? <laughs> Hanging out in the shade, I guess. Oh, it doesn't even Look at me, turn around. <laughs> she doesn't want to get that close to Look at me, turn around. Look, 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 there's glass right here. Look. He can't touch us. And uh, so after Fragile Forest, we come around and we will go to the Penguin and Puffin Coast and the Polar Bears on the way out. And those are two of the coolest exhibits here. There is a whole line to get into the Penguin and Puffin Coast, but it's one of the last things I've got to look at here before heading out, so definitely going. I'm close enough that I get to see some Humboldt penguins here outside while in line. These penguins are outside. I mean, it's still clearly like I can feel the water. The water is going to be cold, but they hang out outside, so clearly they're little, you know, variation in their temperature. I got the cool waterfall. Oh, it's fun. Loud waterfall. Ooh, it's cold and it stinks. That's the that's the penguins. Oh yeah, cold and stinky. Really cold when you're sweating. They're uh, very low walls here. They're really just trusting us not to get our fingers bit by penguins. We got king penguins and rock hopper penguins and gen two penguins all together here. And this little tank here actually connects under the water to the other side as well. It's very crowded right here. Whoa. Were you in the splash zone? You didn't know that? They are very acrobatic. Oh, 
Swimming with the penguins. Having a jolly good time swimming around. And, uh, now to Puffin Bay. Here we have uh, tufted puffins and horned puffins. Uh, apparently a king out there somewhere. It's not really a puffin, but oh well. I don't care about these as much as penguins. And you can tell by the lack of cloud over here, neither does anyone else. But, you know, there you go. Puffins. A rotating door. Exit through the gift shop. <laughs> and glasses fog up. Back out in the heat. <laughs> and now we get to the polar bear. Who is really nice and social, and to whom everyone really trusts a big old pane of glass. Giant polar bear just on the other side of a pane of glass, and everybody just trusts it. <laughs> that is a very large bear. Very large bear on the other side of a piece of glass. But you know what? It hasn't broken out yet. But the odds is going to break out when I'm standing there, right? And now, from here, I'm just walking by the under construction area back to the north entrance. The last year or so? Oh yeah, at least a year. They've been building um, like a bear. Like they have a they have a massive like that. That's one little spot of the um, polar bear exhibit. He has a huge area, multiple pools, a big you know out of water area. That's just where he's at right now. So that's why I captured him. But they're building another one for another type of bear or two. But uh, they have been building that for a while and looks pretty far along um, but for right now it's still just a big under construction area Let's see what it says it's gonna be grizzly it's gonna be grizzly ridge oh uh, yeah it's been a couple years but it will open September 15th so like a month yeah I'm uh, headed out back in Forest Park proper. <clears throat> leaving uh, leaving the zoo for the day. I'm sure I'll do other Forest Park videos in the future. Check out the art museum and maybe even history museum. Uh, hopefully I'll be back tomorrow for the Muni actually. Though obviously I don't get to show as much of that. Just because you're not allowed to record during the show. Um, but uh, but I do enjoy it here. I'm headed home now. Gonna relax a bit. In case I don't uh, see ya. I guess I'll say uh, thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, etc. Join me as my journey continues. I do a daily vlog here and uh, I'd love if you'd uh, follow it, comment below, let me know what you thought of the zoo. Thanks for watching.